Okay, so 1.5, output input resistance and circuit loading. When considering a circuit from the perspective of two terminals, okay, like we mostly have a lot so far, uh, either as input or output, it is often characterized as having a Thevenin or Norton equivalent resistance and if it is considered as an output as having an equivalent Thevenin or Norton source. Okay. So uh, this is from simple circuits to very complicated circuits, entire instruments. Okay. If the terminals are connected to be an output, its output resistance is just the Thevenin or Norton equivalent resistance. So we know how to find those. It's not too bad. Other names for this output resistance are source or internal resistance. So source resistance or internal resistance. For instance, batteries have, we call it typically an internal resistance or an output resistance for the battery. Um, figure 1, 3 illustrates this model. So the idea is that if you have a source, if your circuit is acting as a source, then you have a, a Thevenin or Norton equivalent source. And if it's acting as a load, so it doesn't have a source component to it, then um, it has an equivalent load, um, RL. Okay, so sort of a concept and a terminological idea here. Uh, so if the terminals are, con are considered to be an input, its input resistance is the Thevenin or Norton equivalent resistance of the circuit. Another term for input resistance is the load resistance. Okay, so for instance, uh, you might have a, I don't know, a light bulb or something like that. That would be considered to have, be a typical uh, load resistance where you would, you would model it like this. It would be a load and you would find the load resistance. Um, the source is uh, something that, like a battery or something that supplies uh, power to the circuit. So we have these, these terms, though, come up a lot, these, these terms of, of the output resistance or the input resistance. And I think they cause a lot of confusion, uh, but they're mainly there to help us. They're there to help us simplify a, a model. So we don't need to have a big, complicated model for everything. Um, we can just use a simple um, um, model with an output or an input resistance. Okay. Okay, loading the source. Loading a source means to connect another circuit to it that draws power. Okay, so you've got the circuit that is like the, the power grid, and you connect your, I don't know, toaster to it. <laughs> Not sure why I chose that. Oh, it's because I didn't eat breakfast this morning. That's why. I'm hungry. <laughs> Um, so you connect your toaster to it, you're loading the, the power grid circuit, okay? So um, that's what it means to be loading a circuit. Loading a source means that specifically the source is being loaded. Um, great. So let's explore what happens when we connect a load to the source for the circuit in figure 1-3. So this is the same figure. So say you've got a load and you've got a source and you just bring them together just boop. before connecting the source output voltage is so v out is equal to we've got we've got a, a loop here right so we can say oh v out is just equal to VE minus VR1, right? Or VRE, I should say. I call it VE, so VRE. So we know that, so KVL told us that, KVL. VE minus Let's say, let's use uh, ohm here. 
Um, um, so VRE is equal to what if you use Ohm's law? Uh, IRE times RE. Yeah? V equals IR. Good. Uh, what is the current that's going to be flowing through this before it's connected? Remember, we're talking about before it's connected. How much current is going to go through RE? All of it. All of none. All of none will go through. None, and there's no current that's going to go through because it doesn't have anywhere to go. Because it's open, right? No, yeah. So current can't spill out the end, we assume. I mean, we're ignoring the possibility that current could spill out the end in like arc or something. Uh, so it's not connected. And so there's no current flowing. So therefore, this resistor has no current flowing through it. Okay, so this is zero, and we have just VE here. This is another thing that we'll often later just look at it and reason our way through without writing equations. If you have a source that doesn't have a connection, it's just disconnected, we don't flow any current from it, and the Output voltage is just the source voltage. It's not being loaded at all. It doesn't, have, it doesn't even get loaded by its resistor, that its internal or output resistance, because there's no current flowing through it. OK? So that's our output. This is equivalent to connecting a load with an infinite resistance, right? If you connected a load that was infinitely resistive, it would be like not even connecting a load at all, right? Um, after connecting, we have a voltage divider, right? So once you connect these up, so bring them in, connect these. So I'll draw the connection here. Then we have a voltage divider. One resistor, two resistors. Okay. So we have that V out. is equal to the output resistance, which is the load resistance in this case, divided by the load resistance plus the um, source resistance, or I called it RE, um, times the input, which is VE in this case. So. And then you can, I've, I rewrote this in terms of ratios. So if you divide the numerator and the denominator by RL, you get 1 over 1 plus RE divided by RL times VE. OK, so let's explore what happens when the ratios, when we change the ratio. OK, so as RE over RL goes to 0, so RE over RL goes to zero, the output voltage approaches the source voltage, the, the original source voltage. Okay? So in other words, if we've got a really uh, uh, large load resistance, right? RL is large compared to the output resistance of the source, then our output voltage is essentially the same as their input voltage. It doesn't affect the circuit. The, the, the circuit started out with V out being VE. And so if RE over RL is, goes to 0, then the V out is still VE. So it's like we didn't connect anything. Nothing happened when we connected um, um, the load. Also, as RE over RL goes to infinity, V out goes to zero. So if RL is very, very small compared to RE, then VE goes to zero. Or not VE, sorry, V out goes to zero. 
VE is whatever it is, but the output voltage is effectively zero. So if you took a wire and you connected it up, it's not going to be able to maintain any voltage between the two terminals because you connected a wire, right? Um, but equivalently, if your RE is just really big, even if your RL isn't that small, um, the relative size is significant. So, something to keep in mind. Okay, so to sum up, so relatively small output resistance and large input resistance yield a loaded voltage near nominal. Some sources are labeled with nominal values assuming no load and others assuming a matching load, okay? It turns out that a matching load actually gives you the most uh, 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 power transfer, but that's something that we haven't proven. Um, in this class, but it's true. Uh, a load equal to the output impedance. Uh, for this reason, it is best to measure the actual output of any source. So it's really, uh, uh, you can go to the manual and you can check, like, so what is, you know, what, what is the reading on the dial supposed to mean? Is it, it, the reading on the dial is almost certainly uh, assuming some load resistance, okay? Some specific load resistance. Maybe that's infinite load resistance. Maybe that's a matching load resistance. Maybe that's 50 ohms. Um, but if you go to the manual, you should be able to find that out. If you want to be safe, though, when you connect up your load, measure what the voltage actually is that's being supplied. So just because you connected it to a 12 volt battery, it doesn't mean it's getting 12 volts once you attach the load. And you guys are going to get to explore this a little bit in the lab um, next week. So next week's lab is on voltage dividers, measuring voltage and stuff. So you get in there and get after it. It'll be fun. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you guys on Friday. Don't forget to do your homework.